Well, I think the problem for Netflix is that the more you add, the more you end up paying. And so Netflix is starting to look like the one that's going to have to spend a ton of money on original content to keep keeping up. Disney, the juggernaut, is consolidating so much content, it's starting to feel like cable. And those modest price increases keep making it the most expensive one in the bunch. I actually think it's fairly vulnerable if you've got 10 different services. It's starting to look like the one you might be able to cancel. Huh. Robert Frank, what is the what is your menu of uh, of streaming services in the in the Frank household? Uh, we have everything, and I can't <laughs> cancel Netflix because season three of Formula One Drive to Survive just started, and I'm I'm hooked on that docu series. I love Formula One. Look, I, I mean, yes, they they are playing defense from a stock perspective, but if you look at the content side, they had 138 original series last year. 180 original movies, and that's that's in 2020 when there was a slowdown in production. Yeah, it's going to be very expensive, but in this fight for, let's say, most families have three or four streaming services, there's no question they will always be number one or two. And as far as price increases go, I mean, in my house, they could double the price, and I would still have to pay given how much my daughters watch Netflix. So uh, in the short term, it's going to be a bite to profits. But their content is just massive and getting bigger. Automatic pay on the credit card really works in Netflix's favor. I got to say that. <laughs> Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.